Hi. In this lesson, I want us to uh, look at the work done by uh, an incredible machine. One of the Mars exploration rovers that explored the surface of Mars for about 15 years, giving us some incredible geological information uh, about the, this planet and some of the geological processes that have formed its surface. Opportunity explored a part of um, Mars that uh, you can see from this uh, map has a range of, of heights. This is a place where we're seeing evidence uh, of lots of different things going on. We've got some highland areas shown in the, uh, the green colour, and we've got some lower areas, uh, some of them clearly um, meteorite impact craters. Others well, might have different origins uh, that are shown in purple colours. While it was exploring uh, this area of Mars, it also broke a world record. Uh, Opportunity Rover is the vehicle that's travelled furthest over any extraterrestrial body. Uh, a total distance of over 45 kilometres over that 15 years. We need to have a look at some of the things that it found. This is the area that it was exploring. You can see the landing site is marked on the map. But what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to uh, locate some of the other places that Opportunity visited on its journey. Now, I've given you grid references of uh, some of these places. In questions A and C, on pages 16 and 17 of your booklet. I'd like you to have a go at those questions. I'd like you to mark uh, where these particular um, locations actually are, because they're going to mark part of the route that Opportunity took as it was exploring this part of Mars. Two of these places are shown uh, in these photographs. These are the photographs uh, you can see at the top of page 17. Both of these photographs, um, which are selfies of Opportunity Rover, also show uh, some evidence that we have for there being water on Mars. What can you see in the rocks? that might suggest that water has actually uh, existed as a liquid on the Martian surface. Clearly a long time in the past. But we can see really good evidence on both of these photos that water was there. You might want to start having a look at uh, the homework for this theme. You'll find that on page 18, I've given you four photographs of places visited by Mars rovers. Each of these photographs shows some evidence of either water on the surface of Mars or volcanic activity on Mars, or possibly even both. There's a link uh, to go with that homework uh, either um, in text or as a QR code. The QR code will link you uh, to a web page which looks at some of the uh, details of this. But there's some key bits of information uh, photographed and sampled by these rovers that really do give us a really good indication of some of the processes that have affected Mars over geological time.
So, I'd like to press pause now, have a go at questions uh, 8A, 8B, and 8C, and also perhaps have a start to look at question 9. See what you can come up with. If you do need a refresher on how to work out a grid reference, uh, have a look at um, Steve Backshall's explanation uh, using Ordnance Survey Maps. The grid references on this map work in exactly the same way. Okay then, let's have a look at some of the uh, answers to these questions. So if we have a look at our map, and if we locate the two photographs that you've got on page 17, we can see that photograph one was actually taken when opportunity was uh, visiting Endurance Crater and photograph 2 was taken when Opportunity was in Beagle Crater. Now both of these photographs have evidence of uh, water. If we look at the rocks in Endurance Crater you can see just to the left of the rover there there's some very clear layering in those rocks. Now that's a good indication that those rocks were laid down uh, fairly gently uh, in water, in standing water. We find the same things here on Earth. So there's some really good evidence there uh, for there being water at the surface. But there are a few other ways though that uh, we can get layers uh, in rocks like that, for example, uh, where we get volcanic ash falling out of the sky. Photograph two, though, is more definite evidence, but it's a little bit more subtle. If you look at the uh, rocks that um, Opportunity Rover is actually sitting on there, you can see they're cracked. And they're cracked in quite a distinctive pattern. It's the same type of cracks we get where we have wet mud at the Earth's surface that dries up. Because when it dries up, the mud will shrink, and we get a series of these multi-sided cracks forming uh, within that mud. And that's what we see evidence for there in Beagle Crater. It shows us that water must have been sitting on the surface there, um, with this fine-grained mud uh, at the bottom of the crater, that water then has evaporated away, uh, leaving the mud behind to shrink and crack in that very distinctive fashion. The other two places I asked you to find, places that NASA called Homestake and Esperance, are located around the edge of Endeavour Crater. So we can see uh, from this, the, so the outline of the route that Opportunity must have followed. Now I ask you to perhaps start having a look at the, um, the homework. We've got these four images um, from different parts, different places on Mars. Two taken by Spirit, two taken by Opportunity. What evidence can you find, or what evidence did NASA find, for uh, both water at the surface of Mars and also volcanic activity on the surface of Mars? Both of these things are crucial if there is ever li any life existing on Mars. As I film this, there's another rover on the way, one that's been called Perseverance, um, 
whose job it is to go and find the geological evidence that may exist for life on Mars. What do these photos show us, though, about these conditions? Have a look at that website, see what you can come up with. So, as we imagine a sunset on Mars, we can see that these opportunity, uh, that these rovers, such as Opportunity, give us a, a huge amount of geological information about how Mars has changed over time. How perhaps uh, an early um, or a young Mars had a very different environment from the one we see today. Now, this is something we're going to explore uh, in more detail in theme two, and perhaps even start to think about whether Mars gives us a prediction of Earth's future. But that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.